Hey guys, it's Levered01 here, and welcome back to another video on Space Engine. So today we are going to be continuing our series on finding an ideal location for a colony out, out of uh, 10,000 stars. And uh, last episode, we narrowed it down to eight possible locations, all of which we are going to narrow down, hopefully to one this video. And finally, next episode, we are going to be exploring that planet and finding the ideal location on its surface. I'm going to be explaining my reasoning for that. All right, let's dive in. So the first thing we're going to be looking for here is atmospheric pressure. Changing the amount of... Uh, yeah, changing the amount of uh, atmosphere within... Uh, a planet is probably one of the most difficult tasks and uh, therefore it is ideal to have a higher pressure and not a low one. For example here we're right on that filter boundary of uh, our filter was from 0 0.5 to 1.5 this one's right at 0 0.52 so we are going to be taking that straight off our list off the bat. Alright let's check out the next one. All right, an atmosphere composition, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, oxygen. It's pretty decent. However, that I don't like very much. For stuff, let's let's delete that from the list. And I do like the fact that there is a moon, though, which should stabilize this axial tilt eventually. However, we'll keep this one for the moment, but we may go back to eliminate it. Alright, this plant here. Alright, atmospheric pressure is ideal, even if the chemicals within it are not. So, let's move on. Ab4. This one, once again on the boundary line. However, we are going to try to keep those for the moment, in case there are a lot of them. Alright, have 5. Alright, 0 0.7, that's better than some of these. Got a little bit of nastiness in the, the atmosphere, but I think for the most part that's fine. Ab 6, let's check up on this. 0 0.554, it's right on the edge, plus we have all of these. We have chlorine in the atmosphere, which is the nasty stuff in pools that is only there to kill bacteria and it was actually used in World War One to kill soldiers in massive quantities which is why they had to invent gas masks so let's delete that all right let's go to planet seven here once again we're on the edge but sadly most of our planets do not um, go in an ideal area, so I suppose we'll leave this for now. However, as I said in the last video, the rings may be a problem. Alright, let's take a look at our final option for the moment. Alright, I don't like that complex atmosphere here. We've got more chlorine. Um... I don't know what that is, but that doesn't look good. Even though we have a good atmospheric pressure, I'm afraid we're going to have to get rid of this planet from the list. So, now we've narrowed it down to five planets. Let's just uh, cut the one with the least pressure from them off. One more. So, that one's fine. So, 642 to beat, 647, 7, and 0 0.5. Alright, 597. Alright, 7 is getting cut off the list. Now we've narrowed it down to 4 colonies based on the surface pressure. Alright. Now, the next 
thing we are going to be looking for is, as I was looking for already, was de deadly chemicals in the atmosphere. Kind of jumped the gun there, but I think that's fine. Alright, so this one, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen. It's not that bad. Ooh, that's not good. Sulfur oxide, carb... Yeah, I, I suppose this one... Uh, We'll leave it for now because uh, some of these chemicals can be broke that are pretty bad can be broken down pretty easily so might move on just looking for something that can be eliminated right off the bat however i am not seeing that so far we have a surplus of oxygen here which makes this a very strong candidate all right so, now the next issue we are going to be looking is obliquity and rotational period. So, obliquity helps determine the seasons, and it, actually it pretty much is solely responsible for the seasons, and uh, rotation period is uh, responsible for how long the days are. Now, if you have a day that's too short, it may be pretty bad to live on there so Ooh, yikes 14 hours but we have a nice stable obliquity it looks like or not yeah i'm afraid we're gonna have to cut that off failed both parameters there let's go to this one all right so now the thing about this planet here is 15 hours, not the best, not the worst. 40 degrees, it's not ideal, but we can keep it for now. Alright, 15 and a half hours, obliquity of 30 degrees. That That's a very strong candidate right there. So. Alright, looks like 4 is definitely on the in list. Alright, we've got an axial tilt of 13. Looks like that would mean the planet would have mild seasons. And a rotational period of 16 and a half hours. It's much closer to, the, to Earth than the other two. So I think we're going to be cutting off three from the list. And now, what this will leave us with is to determine off the other categories which would be ideal now this planet has a low surface pressure slightly over normal axial tilt and it does have the benefit of having multiple moons which would be good for resources and other issues however the other planet has advantages such as having a greater quantity of oxygen by far making it easier to terraform in addition the gravity mm, not so much Let's see the planet also has mild seasons and the temperature looks pretty decent let's look at the temperature on this Ooh, this planet's pretty chilly it would be a settlement would likely be near the equator all right 12 moons. Wow, that's a little absurd. Let's see, we have a large one over here. I don't like that unstable, or not unstable orbit, but just irregular orbit. That might be difficult. I mean, eccentricity of 0 0.6. That's pretty large. All right. Yeah, I suppose having an, a moon like that is fine, but it's just not not ideal. I I really do appreciate the fact that we have two other moons very close to them, or four if you count these little tiny little objects. How big is this? All right, diameter fourteen kilometers. That'd be pretty 
it would be pretty helpful for some first colony resources. You could just land on this small moon, mine it out a little bit, and move on. So, what what I'm saying here is you have the benefit of uh, you would be able to maybe park by one of the moons or on one of the moons and then uh, observe the planet a little longer for ideal colony locations when approaching it. And now let's take a look at the moons of the other planet. Alright, can I have some orbits? Alright, it looks like these are all pretty minor. So that is a disadvantage, in my opinion. So this one... Oh yeah, um, mass diameter 24 kilometers, that is a benefit, it's a little bigger than the other one. However, we don't have any larger moons, which is my, which is my problem with this. It, this one's only got four moons. That is a disadvantage right there. Once I get, once again, I'd like to mention superior atmospheric composition and such. Let's see, this one also has a uh, unicellular life, so does this one. Pretty much the same, which means uh, no problems unless you go in the water. Now, another thing I would like to look at is fresh water. Now, this planet seems like it would have a lot of fresh water sources. I mean, you can see it's dotted with uh, rivers, or not rivers, but a couple, and uh, small lakes which I think would be a big advantage for settlements because fresh water is one of the essential resources. And also, while the temperature is cold, there is a very large midsection which isn't really affected by this. At least it appears. It's just a... It's, yeah, I guess it is. So... That is a problem as well. Planet-wide frost, except for maybe this region. Let's take a look. It's like someone painted it with a brush. Yeah. So, revisiting temperature on HAB5. Uh, the temperature is a bit more pleasant at uh, 3 degrees Celsius. And I'm afraid that that's a little difficult to beat, especially with its mild seasons and uh, oceanic, or not oceanic, and oxygen in the atmosphere. It, this plant makes a very strong case for itself, and so I'm afraid we are going to have to eliminate HAB4 from this list. All right, and so now as a a plan for the colony would most likely be to it would be to go to this moon right here. Wait, what's the orbit of this thing? Oh yeah, stable. And be to most likely land on this moon mine it out and observe the planet below and then once you've completed that you could uh, just leave it be and land on the planet with a couple extra resources not as much as if you chose the other one but maybe enough to make it work i mean 12 kilometers of asteroid they're in one direction, of course, is pretty decent. So, this is going to be our picking, and I'm afraid this is going to be a pretty short episode, as we managed to settle yesterday's affair very quickly. So, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for more, and if you have any requests for videos, comment that down below as well. And Leverdo1, signing out.